Whoo, there it is. We look here, we got plus three, and over here we got plus eight. So we're gonna have to have plus four. Go back that way. And it should be plus four this way too then. Now you can re-zero your indicator and check it again. Zero, 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 okay. Cast iron is a little more forgiving as far as oil. You know, if that was steel, I'd, I'd use oil. That was five eighths. And you chamfer the hole. So now when the drill starts, it'll start a, a little better. I don't have a drill to get to the next step. You only want to leave about five, ten thousandths for reaming. So we'll, we'll bore it out. Post the size, then we can run the reamer for it. At this point, I ran out of time, and Uncle Tim's a pretty busy guy. I left the hand wheel with him, and he brought it to a friend's shop where they broached it. One other part Uncle Tim made was this washer. It goes behind the main carriage wheel. The original washer was cast iron, and it was a pretty snug fit. I probably didn't need to replace it, but as long as it's all torn apart, I might as well have a new one made.
originally there was a small louvered panel covering a small opening. However, on my machine, that small opening was enlarged rather unskillfully before being covered rather crappily. This panel doesn't have louvers, but I'm happy with how it turned out. I think it's a big improvement.
Well, that turned out nice. And believe it or not, that's my first time working sheet metal. The entire process you just watched took about two to two and a half hours to do. With the panel fully repaired, I finished cleaning it up and getting it ready for paint. There are three louvered panels on the lathe, and one of them fits the curved side of the motor housing. So I carefully shape and bend this one to fit. Thankfully, the metal is quite thick, which makes shaping much easier than if it were thin. Just prior to painting, a few dabs of spot filler will make the repair completely invisible. Using what I learned from painting some larger parts before, I use a brush to get into all the nooks and crannies. With full paint coverage applied with the brush, I come back with the roller to give a nice, even, streak-free finish. Oh, they're perfect. Please be just as good. Oh, they're beautiful. That's amazing. I was ridiculously excited to see this package come in the mail. Basically, two original louvered panels, completing my set of three, just showed up on my doorstep pretty much out of nowhere. A gentleman named Jason from the Monarch Lathe Owners and Operators Facebook group saw that I was restoring my machine asked for my address, and just shipped these. That was it. And these panels are basically perfect. So Jason, if you happen to find this video, thanks man. You are awesome. These panels look way, way better than the alternative, which were some $8 panels I found on grizzlyreplacementparts.com that I planned on painting and tacking on there, just to have something. The cross slide wiper cover was originally a piece of cast iron that was shaped to cover up a felt wiper. The felt wiper keeps the ways clear of any dust or debris, and with a little oil, will keep the ways in good shape indefinitely. The original piece was cracked into three pieces, and I only had two of those. Thankfully, I was able to use those two pieces to get some key measurements. Cutting the 45s on the cover was particularly challenging, and if I had to lay it out from scratch, it would have taken much longer. Once the part was successfully test fit, I carefully drilled the holes. Then I trimmed the part to size and cut the relief that will hold the felt wiper. It took several hours to machine this replacement part, which really goes to show that casting it out of steel is definitely the preferred way to go in a production environment. With all the critical dimensions milled on the part, I just had to shape it, or to make it look like the original cast part. And it did get kind of hot, so I used gloves to finish up. The felt I'm using is called hard felt. It is 100% wool and very expensive. This machine uses three different thicknesses of felt. 
However, they are all fractional divisions of 1 8 inch. So I simply purchased 1 8 inch thick sheets and stacked them to get the thickness I needed. They're going to be held in place by covers anyway, so it doesn't matter if I use multiple layers to get the thickness that I need. It was so satisfying to see how nicely the cover fit. This is actually my very first machined part ever. And I think it's really cool that it's in a highly visible place in the machine room. The final part to make is called a carriage clamp. It is a block of metal that gets bolted to the carriage. It's there to keep the carriage in place in case of a crash or some other nearly catastrophic event. This was a relatively simple part to machine, but again, it would have been much faster had it been a casting. When examining the part on copying, the machine surfaces were not really that important. The most important thing on this part were that the bolt holes were drilled in exactly the right spot. Once a test fit confirmed that the holes were in fact drilled in the right spot and the part had all of the appropriate clearances to fit, I began shaping it. Because I wanted to match the other part, I need to approximate what the casting looks like, meaning that I need to turn it in a few different odd ways and mill away the material mostly by eye instead of by measurement. The most effective way I found to shape steel was to use carbide burr bits in a die grinder. Once shaped to look like the original, a flap sanding wheel removed any tool marks and gave it a nice texture that is ready for paint. I then applied paint with an acid brush to all the non-machined surfaces. The bolts that hold this part onto the carriage are missing, so I'll get those ready next. The new old looking bolts and the new clamp block are a perfect match. Well, now there's just one more video to go and that's final assembly. Thanks for watching and till next time.